So let's do some sample calculations with polyprotic acids. Um, and I'm going to do two examples of this, both with H2SO4. Uh, but what we're going to do is change that initial concentration. And we shall see how this all changes as a result. Okay. So we also have to consider that the very first proton that sulfuric acid pops off um, is considered a strong acid. So notice here, I'm just drawing a full on equilibrium arrow, which will make our H plus and our uh, bisulfate, HSO4 minus. And notice it says this Ka1 is large. So because it doesn't give a number, it just tells us it's large. That means this thing fully dissociates, okay? And so uh, if I have one molar of this initially, and we could think of this as zero and zero, we know that because this is a strong acid, all of this one molar will react, which will generate one molar bisulfate and one molar H plus. So I'm kind of setting up this little just simple uh, before and after table, not quite a rice table, but just to show us that when we put one molar H2SO4 in solution, automatically we get one molar H plus and we get one molar bisulfate. And so now we're going to go set up our rice table where our reaction is going to be the bisulfate HSO4 minus. Um, and of course, that's going to undergo its equilibrium reaction to generate more H plus and then finally sulfate SO42 minus, okay? So now we can set up our ice table here. And in this case now, this is why we needed to recognize both H plus and HSO4 minus are one molar. Because now in my initial column, I'm going to put 1.0 molar for HSO4 minus, 1.0 molar for H plus, um, but we have zero sulfate, okay? So now, of course, that means even though H plus, we have some amount there, because the sulfate is zero, that means this has to be a plus X, okay? And if sulfate's increasing, then H plus has to increase. And of course, that means uh, bisulfate has to decrease, okay? So now in my equilibrium column, we know that's 1.0 minus X. We know the H plus is 1.0 plus X, and the sulfate is just X, okay? Um, we're also going to do a little bit of a test here for the 5% rule. And the reason why we're going to do it, so Ka2 is 1.2 times 10 minus 2. That's not a very small Ka, however, our bisulfate concentration is pretty large at 1.0. All right, so we'll, we'll use that assumption. We'll go ahead and say, assume that this is pro approximately 1.0. However, if we do that for the HSO4 minus, then we have to do that for the H plus as well. So we assume that this is approximately 1.0, okay? Um, and so now there's a couple, thing that's, it's a couple things that's going on. So for one, if we're calling the H plus 1.0, then we, we pretty much have our pH at that point, okay? We could calculate that the pH is the negative log of 1.0, all right? Um, and so let's do that. Let's do that test. So we'll say pH equals the negative log of 1.0, which, you know, we could have just done in the first place up here, right, to see what we get. And when you take the log of one, you get that the pH is 0, 0.0. So that's pretty acidic, okay? So now what if we went ahead and, and just solved for X anyways using our typical 5% rule, all right? Well, that's gonna be the Ka value, 1.2 times 10 minus two, and that's all gonna equal the equilibrium expression, H plus times sulfate divided by bisulfate, okay? So that's really just gonna be quite simple. That's gonna be 1.0 times X divided by 1.0. So we know quite simply that X is 1.2 times 10 to the minus two. And now if we wanna test um, our 5% rule, 
we're going to take that 1.2 times 10 minus 2, all divided by the 1.0. Um, and I can do that in my head, right? That's 1.2 times 10 minus 2, which is the same as uh, 0.012. And if I turn that into a percentage, that's 1.2%. So the 5% rule checks out. And we can see that just calling the pH 0, 0.0 from an H plus concentration of 1.0, that works, okay? So we're gonna do another example here with the same problem, and I'm gonna record a part C video for that.